Hello and welcome back! My name is Hannah and this is Jar of Fireflies and here you'll find videos all about my life as an Orthodox Jewish homeschooling mother of three. And today we're having an upshearin. Okay, so I just used the word upshearin and you may or may not have heard this word before. For those of you who have not heard this word, I will explain. So an upshearin, also called a halakha, is a hair cutting ceremony. And you do this ceremony for boys when they turn three years old. So for the first three years of life, Jewish boys who follow this tradition, not every, yeah, I should backtrack here just a second. Not every Jewish boy does the upshearin tradition. I am Orthodox and not every Orthodox Jew follows this upshearin tradition. It just depends on what your family's traditions are. I will say that most of the people in my Orthodox community do the upshearin, but definitely not all of them. Okay, but our family does. <laughs> Okay, so now backing up and getting back to what this upshearin thing is. Okay, so for the first three years, we who follow this tradition of the upshearin do not cut our son's hair. It just gets very long and this leads to lots of fun conversations in public sometimes where everyone's like, oh, what a cute little girl. And you're like, no, even though he has long, beautiful, flowing, curly hair, that's a boy. <laughs> So my first son had very long curly hair and that was actually really, really hard to cut because it was so beautiful and we actually left it kind of long for a while. But anyways, my son that just turned three, we finally got around to doing his upshearin today and I'm so excited to share with you. So my youngest son, until today, we had not cut his hair at all ever. And he just turned three a little bit ago and we're finally getting around to doing the upshearin ceremony today. <laughs> so the upshearin ceremony, it really is just cutting the hair. There's no special blessings or ceremony, really. It's just, just cutting the hair. So we, we cut his hair and it's also a time when he will start wearing a kippah, a yarmulke, and it's also when he'll start wearing tzitzit, which are, I don't know if you've ever seen like those little strings hanging out of the clothing of Jewish men and boys those things. Okay, we don't do an upshearing ceremony for girls. Girls don't need to have short haircuts, so we don't need to do that. They, girls also don't need to wear a kippah yarmulke, and we also don't need to wear tzitzit, so there's really no reason for us to go through this whole upshearing thing. So yeah, girls don't do it, but the boys do. Now, when my first son had his upshearing, it was like this big party. It was his birthday party, and we invited all of our friends, like grown-up friends, and we invited like all the kids in the neighborhood. Granted, we live in a smaller neighborhood, but we had like, it was like a whole big to do. We're in the middle of a pandemic right now. So yeah, that's not happening this go round. It was literally just my immediate family here at home. And we had some kind of video chat that my husband set up, all of his family over in Israel and New York. So they were all able to watch and participate in that way, just by sort of being there. Now this morning, now I'm, <laughs> Now, I mentioned that this is when my son will start wearing a kippah, and I realized this morning that the dog had eaten his kippah. So I quickly made him a new one this morning. Here's a little bit of footage of that. Okay, now I have never made a kippah before. I've never attempted this. I don't really know anything about it. So I just basically hopped online and printed out a sort of pattern. It was basically a circle with a few lines across it and just gave it a go. I dug up this really cute kind of cartoony superhero, I guess comic book sort of fabric and just went for it. And it kind of looked like a pancake <laughs> when I was done. Uh, this was, you know, it would work. It's functional, but I decided to go ahead and give it another try. So I grabbed some different fabric because I did not have any more of that pretty cool comic book fabric. And I went for attempt number two. Okay, so if you want to get technical, this was really attempt number three because the very first one that I cut, I cut wrong. And so I kind of had to start over when I was about halfway through. Okay, so anyways, I'm sewing this together now. It seems to be working a little bit better. I learned a few things the first one that I made. So I was making a little bit of changes on how I made this second one, hoping that it would turn out better. And 
you know, so far so good. <laughs> it's not the easiest thing in the world to sew, to be honest, all these curves and things like that. I, I like to sew straight lines. So this was slow going for me, but I had a couple hours to do it before we had scheduled this um, video call. And there it is. There's the final product. And I think it worked out okay. Okay, <laughs> so after I had made the kippa, my husband had the Zoom call all set up and we were ready to go. So we sat him down in a chair and well, I took more video of this. So let me explain while we go through the video. So here is the before of his hair before we did anything at all. It's not too long considering, you know, a lot of boys have a lot longer hair, but you know, it's pretty wild. It's pretty fun. You know, I get a lot of comments in the comment section of my videos about his wild hair. And yeah, it's, it's pretty crazy. I, I did not miss it when it was gone. <laughs> it's kind of hard to comb. So my husband did the first cut. Uh, we've got the tripod over there. You can kind of see it on the edge of the screen where his family is watching. And my husband just kept doing doing a few more cuts and for each family member that was watching he was like this one's for you kind of like a surrogate hair cutter to help them participate a little bit more It was pretty fun to watch, but I wanted to get the rest of us involved. So I called my son over and asked him if he wanted to cut a lock of hair. And of course he absolutely did. He was very excited. So my husband helped get him set up there so that he could do a cut as well. It's very common at an up shearing. There's normally a lot of people there for everybody to take a turn cutting a lock of hair off of the little boy. So you can imagine they get some pretty crazy haircuts by the end of the up shearing and then they go off and have their hair professionally cut somewhere else to fix it. <laughs> so this is me doing a lock of hair. My son is filming while I cut a little bit of hair and then my daughter got to cut some as well. Okay, so another common tradition to do at an upsharon is to have some sort of laminated version of the Hebrew alphabet, the Hebrew letters, the Aleph Beit, and you put honey on the letters and then the little boy will lick it off or point to the letters with his fingers and then lick his fingers. So it has um, something to do with, you know, instilling the sweetness of Torah into our children. Um, it's just kind of a fun little tradition there. So, but my son was having nothing to do with honey whatsoever. So I put M&Ms on each of the letters and instead of licking, you know, off honey, he was just leaning over and biting off the M&Ms and he thought it was just the best game in the world. He thought it was fantastic. He was jumping up and down and he ate every single M&M. So that was fun. <laughs> I have been to up Sharon's where the the little birthday boy will say each of the letters as he's doing this. We didn't do that with our son. He's starting to learn his letters, but he doesn't know them all yet. Um, and I'm really in no rush to rush reading. But it's it's not uncommon for the little boy to at the up Sharon start naming all the letters. With all the excitement of the haircutting and the M and M's. We almost forgot to give him his kippah and his tzitzit. So <laughs> I went and grabbed the kippah and he was so excited to put that on his head. He knew that it was for him when I made it earlier and we put his tzitzit on and had to straighten him out there a little bit. He was so proud of himself. He wanted to walk around and show everybody. After that he was just playing around there for a few minutes and we were still video chatting with the family from out of town and then we got started on actually cutting his hair after we got off of our video phone call uh, turns out this is a hidden talent of my husband's he knows how to cut hair <laughs> who knew Of course, being three and barely so, he was really not interested in holding too still during the haircut. So it took a little while, but we did eventually get it done. So that's really it. 
My husband finished up the haircut. He looks fantastic. I got a little emotional because my little boy doesn't look like a little boy anymore. He looks like a big boy with a big boy haircut. <sighs> my baby. I asked him today, I said, I said, are you a baby or are you a big boy? He goes, I'm your baby, but I'm a big boy. And I was like, that's my boy. <laughs> So yeah, um, that's that's where we're at right now. That is the upshare in ceremony. I just wanted to share that with you guys. I am now going to hop online and order some more kipot for my son. Kipot is the plural of kipa in Hebrew, so that he has plenty, so that if the dog eats another, or if he inevitably loses one, because that also happens quite a bit with these little boys, uh, we'll have plenty stashed away for him to wear. <laughs> All right. Thank you all so much for tuning in today. I super appreciate you. I hope that you enjoyed learning about this tradition of the upshearing with me. If you did, please give this video a like. And if you haven't already subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the bell so that you don't miss any of my future videos. I hope you all have a great rest of your day and I will see you in my next upload.